What's up everybody? If you happen to have questions about understanding, adjusting, and using the drag on your fishing reel, well you've clicked on the right video because today I'm going to dive deep into that subject and hopefully clear up some misconceptions and explain to you how to properly take advantage of the drag on your fishing reel. This production is being brought to you by Battery Outfitters, powering everything from lawn tractors and sports cars to RVs and forklifts. With locations all over the Mid-South, they are your neighborhood battery store. Hey everybody, my name is Quentin and you're watching Mid-South Outdoor Life. On this channel, I try to bring you content all about living an active and outdoor lifestyle with a pretty heavy influence on fishing videos, most of which are catfishing videos. However, today's subject, which is understanding, adjusting, and using the drag on your fishing reel, this could all be applied to various different types of, of species. No matter what you're fishing for, you could apply some of this information to that. The reel that I will be using for this entire video is the Cast King Rover 50. Now, if you watch my channel any at all, you've probably noticed that I use this reel almost exclusively for all my catfishing. It's on every one of these catfishing rods behind me. And the reason that it is, is because it's super affordable, I have found it to be durable, and I can catch any size fish that I want on this reel without spending a fortune. Recently here on this channel, I did a full review video of this reel, the Cast King Rover 50. It's important to mention that I did not get paid by Cast King to do that review. I did that review basically for the same reason I do any other review. I decided that I liked the product enough to want to spend time doing a review of it so that others might also enjoy the product. That being said, I caught some flack over that video. The reason I caught flack was I had misquoted the amount of drag that the 50 size Cast King Rover actually has. I believe I quoted it as having 20 pounds of drag, when in reality it only has 12 pounds of drag. Now, alongside those people that gave me the static over misquoting the amount of drag, I got a lot of people saying, Quentin, how do you possibly catch trophy sized catfish with only 12 pounds of drag? This brings me to one of the first misconceptions about fishing reel drag. Try to imagine that this drag is actually just a clutch, because in reality, it very much is just a clutch. It's a set of discs that slide together between this end of a mechanical device and this end of a mechanical device. And they just slip back and forth, giving you like a, a cushion, a bit of forgiveness, or an insurance policy that you, the fisherman, won't apply too much pressure on the fish, thereby breaking your line, breaking the internals of the reel, or breaking your rod. So in this case, what the insurance policy on this reel is telling us is the maximum amount of force that you can exert on this reel before it will begin to slip is 12 pounds. I don't doubt for even a second that there are skeptics out there in YouTube land watching this video right now as we speak and they are saying to themselves, well there's no way I could catch my big macho catfish with 12 pounds of drag. I need 20 or 30 or 9,000 pounds of drag. However, those skeptics are wrong and I'm about to do a demonstration for you guys to show you what I'm talking about. Did you know that 20 pounds of drag or 30 pounds of drag at the absolute extreme end would most likely break any catfish rod on the market when completely dead loaded? I'm going to show you how that's true. Wait, there's a couple more things you need to know before I show you this demonstration. The first thing you need to know is, what am I going to do this test with? Well, I'm going to do it with three different fishing rods, all using the Cast King Rover 50. The first rod is going to be the Warrior Cat medium heavy. Now, this is not the same as a bass rod medium heavy. This is a true purpose-built catfishing rod. It's rated as a medium heavy. I've caught fish, you know, from the 10 and 20 pounders all the way up to the 40, 50, 60 pound range. The second rod that I'm going to use is the Rippin Lips medium heavy. If you watch my channel very much, you know that I've used these for a long time and I think they're great. I've caught fish at almost 80 pounds on this medium heavy Rippin Lips rod. So it'll handle a lot of weight. And in the final test, I'm going to break out one of these monster heavy action warrior cats. I haven't caught a big fish on one of those yet, so I can't give you a, 
a hero story for that, but I can tell you that I've casted over two pounds with that rod. It's an absolute monster. The next thing that you need to know before we get into this demonstration is that the maximum drag rating or the maximum amount of control over the slip that your reel will deliver actually changes depending on how much line is on the spool. One little fact that a lot of people aren't aware of is that almost every manufacturer in the business actually tests and rates their reel based on an empty spool because that's where they get the most amount of power or the most amount of drag control. As you increase the line capacity or as the, the line increases on the spool, you actually get less overall drag. I find it to be maybe around 60% of the maximum rating is about what you get when you have a completely full spool. Finally, the next thing you need to know before we dive into this demonstration is that this demonstration is going to be done with only six pounds of drag. Why six pounds? Well, because Victoria and I always set our drag at six pounds on all of our catfishing rigs to catch all of our catfish. It doesn't matter if it's channel catfish, monster blues, great big old flatheads, we catch all of them on six pounds of drag. Victoria is the master at catching giant flatheads. I'll put a picture somewhere on the screen for you. She catches those flatheads on six pounds of drag and it's plenty. So let's go to this demonstration and I'll show you what a few pounds of drag actually looks like when dead loaded on a fishing rod. Okay guys, there's the test weight. That is six pounds of lead. All three of the reels that will be used in this demonstration have been previously set to roughly six pounds. And the goal is to do a 90 degree deadlift off the floor, just barely lifting this weight with minimal, if any, slip. Here we go. Demo number one. We've got six pounds of lead in the floor. We're gonna hold this medium heavy catfishing rod that I know for a fact will handle 40, 50, and 60 pound catfish all day long. And we're going to demonstrate not whether or not you can pick up six pounds, but just how much of a load six pounds actually is in terms of drag and what it does to the rod. So here we go, 90 degrees from the floor. The reel is clicked closed, set at six pounds. I'm going to start lifting. See all that bend and we're just now beginning to stand the weight up. The weight is still on the floor. The drag is beginning to just slightly slip. And here comes the weight. The weight is off the floor. And I want you to look at all that load in that rod, guys. That is a lot of strain on that rod and that is only six pounds of dead left. This drag is set pretty well, so if I just give this thing a slight bump to simulate the fish turning or whipping its tail, the drag is going to slip and that weight's going to go to the floor. There it went. Just a slight twitch is all it took. That's what you want is a smooth drag, guys, and once again, only six pounds. Back to the floor. Let's go on to demo number two. Demo number two. Same six pound weight. Slightly different rod. This one's still rated as a medium heavy, but I know from experience it's just a tick stiffer than the last one. I've personally caught fish at almost 80 pounds on this rod. Here we go. 90 degrees to the floor. Hopefully this drag is set right at six pounds. Start the lift. Look at all that flex. The weight is just now standing up. Almost off the floor, the drag is flipping. It is off the floor and the drag is just barely slipping. We'll simulate a tail flip from that catfish by giving her a thump and it slipped right to the floor. That's exactly what you want. You want to be able to lift the weight that you want to set your drag at with just a little bit of slip. But look at all that load guys from only six pounds. Third and final demo for the purposes of this video. Same six pound weight on the floor. We're going to try to deadlift it from 90 degrees. This time though using the heavy action warrior cat completely different beast than the other two rods. I don't know how much fish this will hold, but I would trust it up against any freshwater fish in North America. If you watched my video titled Fishing for Bulldogs, when I was in my driveway trying to deadlift my 55 pound bulldog, I was using this rod. It's a monster, so it'll have no trouble with this six pound weight. Hopefully the drag is set at six pounds, 90 degrees to the floor, here we go. 
Our weight is standing up and it's off the floor. Will it slip? Yep, little, little twitch and it slips. Once again, guys, this rod is a monster. You can see what six pounds does to it in terms of load. I'm not going to sit here and try to argue that that particular demonstration was the most technically sound or scientifically advanced demonstration ever to be put on YouTube. But I am going to ask for a little bit of credit because, I mean, let's be honest, the greatest scientific experiment that I ever performed was in seventh grade when I put a bunch of live mouse traps into my te teacher's desk drawer to test the reaction that I got from her. But that's another story for another video. Honestly, I wanted to do this demonstration video to show that as cat fishermen, we don't really need the highest possible drag rating available in the market, nor do we need to spend all kinds of money on the most expensive or the fanciest name brand reels on the market. Now, if the fishing reel that you happen to like the most also happens to have some insanely macho maximum drag rating, then kudos to you and kudos to that, that company, I guess. However, if that's the case, I'd like you to highly consider adjusting your drag down from the stratosphere back to earth at somewhere around five or six or eight or maybe even ten pounds. Otherwise, I believe there's a good chance that you might find yourself standing there with a pricey fishing reel, a busted fishing rod, and a broken heart as your fish of a lifetime is swimming away. Nobody wants that. Last but not least, I just wanted to take a second to thank everyone for taking time to watch another one of my videos. Hopefully it'll help some of you out there. And also I want to encourage you to use the comment section below. If you have any questions about this topic or just comments about this topic, just hit me up down there. I read all the comments and I respond to most of them. So until next time guys, thanks for watching, be safe on the water, and uh, good luck to you. This production was brought to you by Battery Outfitters. With locations all over the Mid-South, they are your neighborhood battery store.